Standing on the watch for revival. Today, I want to appreciate the man of God. Jesus said, You know, you've been an inspiration. go back to your homes and your home, your residences. You begin to practice what you've been taught. So some of you are using your phones to record, you can record. So for any move of God to spread in any part of the world, divine hunger or zeal must condition a man. But divine hunger, divine zeal, must consume a man, must lay hold of a man, must be the sound of this man, must be the sound of this woman, must be the prompting of this woman, must be the quickening of this woman, must be the heartbeat of this person. of recent I've been telling people everywhere I've been moving ministry, minister room, that in every generation God is in need of a man and even in this church, church, church today and in this very service God is in need of a man in the book of Psalms chapter 69 from verses 9 to 13 I'll be a bit of teaching and then I'll preach and then I'll pray for people. For the zeal of your house has consumed me. And the mocking insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. 
When I wept and humbled myself with fasting, it became my weeping. When I made sackcloth my clothing as one in mourning, I became a byword, a mere object of scorn to them. They who sit in the city gates talk about me and mock me, for I am the song of the drunkards. But as for me, tell me, but as for me, I want you to walk in this journey of, as we talk about tonight. I, I just want you to be so attentive and, and, and watchful in the spirit. Now, the man begins to explain the zeal that he had for the house of the Lord. How he wanted God to move in this territory, in this church, in this, in this community, in a way and that had coercion. For anything to happen that is supernatural, there must be an ordinary man whose only desire is to lay hold of a supernatural God to intervene in the supernatural way. In every church service, in every gathering where a saints have gathered, there will always be a one person who is consumed by the zeal of the house of God. The man says something he begins to break down the, 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 the challenges, the persecutions that people would choose this kind of path go through. It will never be easy for you, child of God. The moment you choose to walk this journey of seeking God for revival, let me warn you beforehand, it is going to be hard. It is going to be difficult. It will be so difficult for you to bear sometimes. You see, when, when, when Paul comes to the book of Philippians and says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and, his, and the fellowship of his suffering, most of us, we only talk about I I want to know you, Lord, and the power of your resurrection. Gamba neighbor, there is something else. And the fellowship of his sufferings. So the man says, Lord, when your zeal consumed me, the people that I thought would accompany me in this same zeal, they instead ridiculed me. They held insults at me. The more I fasted, the more they looked down on me. The more I waited on you, the more things became tougher on my side. <laughs> look, at, look, look, at, look at this journey. I don't know which version you're reading from, but I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, Your zeal for your house has consumed me. And the mocking insults of those who insult you. Because when, when the moment you see the church of God as it is, what is on the heart of God will begin to be released on your heart. Now, when people insult God, when, do, when they do misevils before God, that not only insults God, but it also hurts you. Hello? And the mocking insults of those who insult you are falling on me. When I wept and humbled myself with fasting, it became my reproach. When I made the sacro of my clothing, I became a byword. Some of you became a byword for people. You are the yardstick of failure. You are the yardstick of unanswered prayer. Because according to them, it's as if your God has never responded to your prayer. Would that they will sit in the city gates, talk about me and mock me, 
and I am the song of the drunkards. What a kid to live a bit What a gay leader. But to battle But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. But as for me, I have a prayer, not to man, not to my pastor, not to my peers around me, but to you, O oh God. At an acceptable time, an opportune time, O oh God, in the greatness of your favor, in the abundance of your loving kindness, answer me with truth. Our neighbor, when we begin to pray, we always have this hope that one day heaven will respond. Now, look at me. I'm a prayer request to you. But one day, that prayer will be answered. That day, that day is coming. That day is coming. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 10, from verses 15 to 17. And when he departed from 2 Kings, chapter 10, from verses 15 to 17. Chapter 10, from verses 15 to 17. And now, when he departed from there, he met Je Je Jehohanan, the son of Richard coming to meet him and he greeted him and said is your heart right as my heart is toward your heart and Jehonadam answered it is Jeho and, and Jeho, Jeho said if it is give me your hand so he gave him his hand and he took him up into his chariot and then he said come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. In the times we are living in, there must be a people that have been consumed already, who are ready to let others join in into what has consumed them for the Lord. Gamba neighbor, whatever we are about to see in these coming days, it is not a one-man activity. It is a collective activity where somebody must let draw somebody to the place where they are in the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in every generation, there is a sound that precedes the move of God. In every generation, in every generation, there is a sound that precedes a move of God. That sound can be physical or it can be spiritual. God, my neighbor, there is a physical sound and there is also a spiritual sound. Now, the spiritual sound begins to affect the natural realm of man. Now Elijah said to her, Go up and eat and drink. For there is the sound of the roar of an abundance of rain. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18 and verses 41. Now what Elijah was perceiving in the spirit was a sound that was still in the realm of the spirit. But someone had to perceive it in natural realm. For it to come to pass. That is why every now and then, someone must be ready to release what you're hearing in the spirit. For God to fulfill that word that you're hearing in the spirit. 
The book of Ezekiel chapter 14 and verses 14. Gamma neighbor, there must be a zeal for holiness in these days. If we are going to see revival, if we are going to stand on our gates and our watch and be able to see what God is about to do, there must be a zeal for holiness. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verses 14. Even if these were men, Gamma neighbor, even if these were men, Noah, now Noah, the Bible talks about him as a man that was found perfect in a perverse generation. Gamma neighbor, 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 Yasi garanga imiride. Katimu ni njia zomga me neiba. To inachi akwe kuasa. Ocha sobolo imiride mulembe guno. Hello. Na mbiro mo vukari wan. Mugambo ocha sobolo kuma virginity. Ne wan kubade bato na bache aji kuma. Nambira mvuka kulirani. Ocha shobolo utajia mumpale. Kali kanchi gonze mkato. Wandiba ngoli wana. Ngegu wakoma kumugu guanta ana. Kula zori jisade wana. Wadia musikati. Mwaka <laughs> My <laughs> Example. Agamba, though this we may never know. Ninga betu doya mo rebe rebe re. Bible ya gaba ina perverse generation. One man was found perfect. Nagamba oyo no yaya no ne wajali ro. Niba gaba Daniel. Daniel was not only part of the three other young men, but he used his influence well. The influence God has given you, what are you using it for? The influence God has given you, what are you using it for? Daniel! He had influence over his three closest friends. And it, it directed them to the way of the Lord. And Job, Gamma neighbor, and Job. Gamma neighbor, Job, we are feeling a little bit. Nasa Galanga, Gamma. 
kwewe tuogerera wakafiwa mviri zoka za kutoka yo urira mo kama timu eshigwa alo what's that yes yobu ya firu abana bonna Gagan again. We business Yakabum Yoga, my name, come at our Ninga or Charlie Mulam. Oh, no, we are in danger of whom we are going to say more than night. When you can you bang about one blanket and by you Nenga singa obadde ochajiri na lero Blanket ya gwa ku mulembe Nyamira ne bati blanket ya chali kati bako sa dove Kati echa kutamya mukama Echi chali na ku mulembe Kavira kakutuwa za buraza atali mulokoli Kubanga ya kasisude musalun No urianga akose chiamanyi nyo Katika endaku nyo tebashi abogira Mwini memupia Tumuliza nebo Chechi kula muza Naibu ligame Niyo bu Yo <laughs> When the secret counsel of God was upon my tabernacle, Sitani Ayama Yakute Kuyop Yobunagamba, ah, Mubirai Yobu Vukawa Nazuri Jam Nemukama Ninche Pum, you know, Yan Sangana. Example Saturn is our Sajaban. Muyobu chapter one from verses uh, verses five. Bible you get a kumasaja kabita yobu that he was so careful with his life, his possessions, his family. And every now and then, this man called Job would make a sacrifice to God. Because he never knew where his children would be. Ngagamat, perhaps they sinned against God. And bring a reproach to me. Ngagamat, Lord, let, let me make a sacrifice of sanctification for them. It is important to parents that are here. To every now and then, go before God and put a covering upon your children. As long as I am still under your roof, I deserve your covering. Let me say this again. As long as I am still under the covering of my master, 
As long as my, stas, my, my master is right with God, I am secure. Hello? Hello? Whatever attacks me finds me with a covering. That is why I'm very careful. Because the day you step out of that covering, you, that is when you know you're very dry. Some people are so anointed as long as they're under the covering. But as long as they sit under the covering, you start wondering we thought that person was anointed under the covering it is always good to use the time of covering that the Lord may raise a capacity inside of you praise the Lord so Job says that I know they've seen when we go in verse 8 9, we see the devil <laughs> explaining what is upon Job he says that oh God you haven't you protected Job with all that he has with all his children Influence yeah, and all that he has, you put an influence you upon You take time him. and read between 8, 9, and 10. Now, the devil knew what Job was capable of and his secret. So God comes back to Ezekiel chapter 14 and verses 14. And gives inspiring examples about these three men. Even if these three men knew what Daniel and Job were in that land, in Uganda, in Chisugu, in Namuongo, in Kampala, in Kampala, tell your neighbor of that place that you're thinking about, Kabalagala Kansan. When they ask you where do you reside, you tell him Kabalagala. They first go back. You're in Kabalagala. What are you doing in Kabalagala? Tell your neighbor a place. There is something that we hold the place. But God says, even if Job, Daniel and Noah, were in that land. By their own righteousness, they could only deliver themselves. Hello. Hello. Tell your neighbor. God is saying. What is he saying? What you are responsible for your territory. Hello. Hello. Tell your neighbor. There is no worry that is going to come, to come and pray for healing. You who is here, God says that He wants to use you. So there has never been a move of God without holiness or purity. Holiness and purity has been the heartbeat of every move of God. For short, I'm going to show you moves of God. You see, the moment you begin to encounter God, you become a firebrand for God. You become a man of fire. You know, the moment you begin to involve yourself in the vibrant spiritual atmospheres, like the times you've been here in the, in the time of praise and worship, times of prayer, such moments, they make a, a person on the heaven has made. That the only heaven has made. Tell your neighbor. 
I am going to become what people cannot understand. No one stays no more and finds God. No one stays in the familiar and finds God. Someone must be to leave the familiar to go to the unfamiliar to experience a God that works in the unfamiliar. Oh Jesus. Because what happens is every time you begin to read the word of God, the word of, become, the word of God becomes flesh and life in your spirit. Can somebody say amen? So there must be a zeal for prayer. So how deep you love prayer? So how deep you love prayer will determine the results you get from your prayers. There is a fervence in prayer that affects everything around you. Let me speak it slowly. There is a kind of fervence in prayer there is a deeper prayer. There is a prayer that goes far. And that prayer determines and starts to show other people of your future to come. Whether I'm here in prayer the way a person prays starts to show me Pastor Jesse, what is going to come of that person. <laughs> Tell your neighbor there is someone who prays for a man and that prayer is for my man. She prays as she looks at herself. She prays as she looks at her makeup. She prays at her looking at her tag. There is a place where she will read. But there is a prayer that says, Go. Enough is enough. You either come down or I come where you are. There's a prayer that you pray. And you forget that you've ever been a sorrowful person. And yet you're sorrowful. There's a prayer you make. And you look at what God is speaking to you in prayer. And even though it is a lion, you tear it up. So there is a fervency in prayer that affects those around to reflect the kind of future you are headed. We are most certainly at the brink of a mighty revival in Uganda. There has got to be a great sweeping move of God that is going to shake this nation like never before. But this kind of revival is going to be birthed by men and women. Men of prayer and men of steel. Men of prayer and men of fire. Men of prayer all my life from P6, when I first got to know the Lord, in my early days of salvation, I had an encounter with God. And I have desired to see great moves of revival everywhere I've been. I one time made a prayer to God. And I told God, I cannot be in a fellowship at school. At school, where you are not, let me be somebody that will stand in the ground to pray that you always appear in our face. Tell your neighbor, revival is bringing God on the scene. Revival, revival is bathing the promise. Revival, revival is bringing to pass the prophetic word over your life. Hello. Hello. 
Because revival, Kwanga revival it means there is a side of God that the world has never seen in your life that is, meeting, that is being made available to a natural man to see. It is once in the spiritual realm. But when revival comes, it becomes natural. It is felt. It is tangible. It is passed on. It is imparted. It is given. That is revival. A revival. Oh, makata kapakosh. The days before we were all, some of us were born. In the days of Field Marshall. Conqueror of the British Empire. O o of the British President Empire. for life. Dr. Idi Dr. Idi Amin Dada. BS, BSOMC. Lord of all the beasts of the earth. Yeah. And fishers of the sea. From 1971 to 1979. <laughs> He persecuted the church. He abolished all of Pentecostal gathering. He massacred the population. He massacred people. He dedicated Uganda to the Islamic faith. The economy went down. Before God. That behind whatever was going on. Behind the scenes. There was an underground prayer. That was being bathed. Oh, let me tell somebody. No matter the devil that is going on in church today. No matter what is going on in the world around us. There are people like us who are saying, Lord, you have done it before. You can do it again. My Bible tells me it is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he has done in another nation, he can do in Uganda. Amen. When people pray, Pastor Jesse, solutions for man's problems are created. When people pray, solutions for man's problems are created. No matter the problems around you, what we need is prayer. What we need is a people that are ready to pray the heart of God in their territory. In the year between 2006 and 2010, as a student at Makere University, the Lord sent us a prophetic word that is, that is going to send a mighty move of God in Makere University. University. The promise was there, but it took a praise of prayer, interest prayer, self-denial, Deep intercessions. Tell somebody here tonight. The Lord is not looking for intercessors. Because even in this meeting today, there are many intercessors that just have titles. And they are not praying. What heaven needs right now is intercessions. Intercession. Men who go behind the veil and say, God, I don't want my glory. I don't want my glory. It is your glory. Even if they don't know that I'm the one that I've been praying, all I want to see God, it is you. Show up, O God. Reveal yourself, O God. Manifest your glory, O God. Awaken my heart, O God. Amen. Amen. Man of prayer. Intercessors who are ready to close down the heavens. My God, my Lord. One day, a man called Benson Idahosa. He had a habit of praying for longer hours. And so he was known by his closest friend. That he would run and travail in prayer. The groanings that were 
also not easy to understand. But those who perceive the very spiritual of those days, the child of God, hearing Arena, hear me. We live in days, even in this church, where we are surrounded by people who seem to be very spiritual. Yet are very carnal. <laughs> Let me tell you somebody. But there must be a groaning. There must be a prevailing prayer. There must be a deep prayer. That people begin to look and know. When the result of quietness. When there is a result of quietness. People will know. There was a David praying in that corner. Uh -huh. Let me tell you. For everyone God uses in their days. God will give you a sound. When you begin to worship. Even when somebody is in the toilet. Or your goody is sincere. so and so is worshiping. When you start to give, they say that if that one starts to give, we don't know what happened to that person. But the grace of giving, it was given unto him. Brethren, what we move in, we get it from somewhere. People, are they call it us, but when it is not ours, because it's all now, it has its all time, the anointing we have, it is written about this man Ben Sonny Dahosa. But then you can come sat Ben Sonny Dahosa. Why in the why why in the Bible College in Texas? He would pray fervently than the entire Bible college. Come a neighbor. Tell your neighbor. You can be a man of prayer. That your volume of prayer mm -hmm. covers the entire church of healing arena. arena. When God looks down, he says, I have my man there. When he looks down, he says, I have my woman there. Hey. This one man, Benson, in the hospital. His prayers sustained the entire Bible college. And they knew it was because of him that the Bible college was able to open and open and open. It was because of him that the Bible college continued to flourish. Bible college, your family must get to a place where they know it is because of you. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. Your prayers are the ones who have worked wonders for them. That there, that there is there is liberty now. There is safety now. There is joy now. There is good sleep. Tell your neighbor. Even though you have made a visit, and to a place where people are sleepless, because you have come with a glory of God. That night, let them sleep. And they say, ever since you came to here, things changed. I have my sister. She spent two years. When they were trapping a rat and it couldn't die. Two solid years. When she went to Noah and Sweden. She called me. She told me Solomon. Because where we grew from. They do not know us as sisters. They know us as brothers. They do not even put titles. They just call us Solomon. Come and sleep here. Brethren. You might be so badly off when you think you're well, but the day you understand that you're badly off is when the person tells you to leave your home that you go and protect their home. Can't you them? Let me repeat it. Pastor Jess. Someone can make you leave your house that you build because he has gone outside the nation and he tells you to come with your wife and, and keep my house. Then you just know that your level is over. And you accept.
I left my home and I went to keep my sister's house. I put many padlocks to go and keep another person's home. But as I was there, I was sitting in the living room as I was praying. I pray to the living God. A rat that had spent two when years when they could trap it and it couldn't die. I woke up in the morning when it was there stuck and it was looking at me. I think the anointing tell your neighbor there is an anointing that can trap a rat. Because the rat that you can trap for two years, it's no longer a rat. It, it has become something else. It becomes a monitoring spirit. So it takes an anointing. But anointing has levels. Hello. anointing. I'm a neighbor on a footer. Just today. I was I was setting up living somewhere. Yafuna green card. He got a green card. America. Going to America. But she didn't have a birth certificate. And called someone. I told that person that I want to have a They got a birth certificate from NASA. When she reached Nairobi and the embassy. <laughs> birth certificate in they scanned the birth certificate and it was a duplicate and they test the when they test them they told they say call Pastor Solomon they, I'm looking for him look for him to pray for you I met these people they were so worried they were so sorrowful they were so sorrowful they borrowed money and, and you borrow money and then you lose everything that you borrowed money for. This guy saying, I have, I have answers. I cannot fast. Tell your neighbor there is a point where you will fast. Those answers that you scare people with. There is a time where you will fast. You, you say you don't know how to pray. There is a day when you will pray. That day comes. This sister used to say, I, I cannot fast. God has made everything available. These things cannot go except by what? Tell your neighbor. And if fasting is fasting. Fasting is fasting. Tell your neighbor you remained on one channel. Three days dry. At all you walk up in the water, start to And now you start to dry, and you feel your so burnt. You don't even feel it. Tell your neighbor whatever you do not feel, it is no longer a sacrifice. Because fasting must be a sacrifice. Wango kusiba eteke doko banga sadaka. So if you mastered your three days of fasting and you feel yourself that's 40, 40, 40. Wait for me to eat pork for one week and I will start. Hello? And then you start the 40 days. And then you come out with nothing. Tell your neighbor you may need to change your fasting. We met and we spoke. Let's believe God for prayer. And I told them to Kirizemu Kama. I, I gave them a day. I was in my car. I'd gone to visit one of my girls. I locked myself in the car. We began began to to pray. Pray. And we were commanding the embassy. To embassy. Because the problem was not theirs. Because the anointing is God's divine enablement that enables a natural man to accomplish great things for God. Few days after, you know, there is a prayer you pray. 
and you don't pray again. And your God has answered. Saddam Saddam we didn't pray again. And this is what happened. After one month, they get an email from the embassy. Bring your right birth certificates. Now, the America I'm speaking about, fraud. when they realize they you have fraud, in you, forever. they block you forever. But God covered them that He may let His people pass through. So today they have traveled today. All this all night. They rode back, back 10 p.m. Because God made a way. So when we pray, we make solutions come to them to the to, to men. So one afternoon, a lady called Freda Lindsay. Called the renowned Gordon Lindsay. Gordon Lindsay. And told him, Have you observed how intensely Benison prays? And the husband said, Yes, indeed, I have observed. And when he gets back to his country, Nigeria, I am certain we shall be hearing great news. People will tell great news before the great news comes. When they see how fervent you are in prayer. Because your intensity of prayer proclaims seasons of greatness. Oh Jesus. When you talk about the Welsh revival, the young man called Minor called Evan Roberts. They speak about that he could pray for seven hours daily. Now it was not just the time he spent in prayer. But the tenacity and the intensity. Your intensity will yield results for you. I'm going to intensify. Tell your neighbor, you know, consistency in prayer is very key. What you do consistently for 21 days becomes a culture. When you talk about the Pentecostal move that, that we are now talking about, enjoying right now, the, the Azusa Street Revival. Azusa Street Revival. This man, William Jessemoa. Um, William, he says such hunger for God was in my heart that I pray for five hours daily for two years consecutively tell your neighbor you are only able to notice the, how many hours you spend on phone with your boyfriend or girlfriend we have very good communication you can't even have a record. When they ask you the communication of the Lord, no, na, two years. Na, but this man says, each day, five hours Such a hunger. Move this man to pray five hours every day. And he says, one day I began to increase it to seven hours. There must be a zeal in, on someone's life tonight. For, For an impartation of the baptism of the Spirit. There must be a desire. How can you be in a Pentecostal church? And you have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you're comfortable. You don't speak in tongues. You don't have a life of fire. You don't have spiritual gift. And it is okay with you. No! Tell your neighbor, no. 
the reason I'm telling you about the reason that's why you left religion. Uh, the reason with the, the difference between us and religious people is the power of the Holy Ghost. Ah, that falls upon us. And we start to speak in tongues. And we start to be people of fire. Because John the Baptist is speaking. And he says, The one comes that is coming up to me. I don't do this issues, but when he comes, he does not baptize with water. Hello. Hello. When he baptizes, the people that are baptized in this country, you would have been really, 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 yeah. you would have stayed there with your baptism, the religious baptism. They poured some little water on your face. Others, you were anointed with that. Oil. And others, you were in your, in your chest. There are things that they do on young children, and you get annoyed. They made many rituals upon you. But this John says, I'm not speaking about that. The man I'm speaking about, when he comes, he baptizes with power and with fire. The power, the life of a Christian must be a life of fire. Hello. Hello. Wherever Wherever you reach, reach, they say a born again has come. How can you live in an area where there is a witchcraft, a, a witch doctor? How can you live in a family when there is a sorcerer? And you also fear that sorcerer. Hello. Tell your neighbor, I must experience. And encounter the baptism of fire and the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, there must be a desire tonight. You see, <laughs> oh God, give me the dress. Lift up your hands, everyone. Say, Dear Holy Spirit. You must say, We can't talk about what you and you don't baptize us. You must show up tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, the prophetic and the apostolic mantle. And the apostolic mantle. Has the ability to activate or stir up the gifts of the Spirit upon an individual that has been called of God. That is why these offices are important in the church. When the apostolic comes, gifts are given to people. Gifts are stirred up. Gifts are quickened. Even, even before we close this meeting tonight, we are going to stir up the gifts of men. Because these two offices were given the ability to confirm those that have been called and chosen of God. Hey, they confirmed the code into being chosen. They confirmed the code. Those that have been called into, those, into being chosen of God. Let me tell you an interesting story that took place here in our neighboring country called Kenya. There is a man called Reinhard Bonke. A few days ago, they were about to, he passed on to glory a few years, a few months ago. But in particular, I want to talk about a lady called Teresa Huayrimu. Why am I talking about these moves of God? But but why it is important to understand that as we pray and hunger for revival, it is very possible that as we pray and hunger for revival, it is very possible. Tell your neighbor, you know, she was born in 1957. During her time on her time, she, former president Arab Moy now, now the late, and Uru Kenyatta right now, the Uru Kenyatta, 
were both devotees and supporters of this woman's God approved work in Kenya. But her life had a journey. Behind every glamour you see on a man and a woman of God, there is a journey. There is a price. There is a cost. One thing I've come to understand as you begin to pursue this journey for God, this is the journey of destiny. It is going to cost you everything. It will cost you your friends, it will cost you your peers, it will cost you your boyfriend, it will cost you your girlfriend, it can even cost you your parents for a time. It will take everything for God to build a man and a woman he has called you to be. Our One day in 1985 at 3 a.m. in the night it's almost 3.25 right now. 3.35 right now. This same lady around this time. You see, it is very easy to forget that day we gave our lives to the Lord. The Lord. But no one meets God and forgets the day he met the Lord. No one forgets that encounter. No one forgets the hour. The, the time, the place, and what, and what he spoke. Because your life rotates around encounters with God. So on July 21st, 1985 at 3 a.m. God gave this woman a life-changing experience. Her room was filled with smoke. And a loud voice called her name. Where Ruby, the glory of God filled the room. Although she feared she perceived this was the Lord speaking. She sat up and the Lord began to talk to her about her calling and gifting. And what he was going to do in that time. And how God had gifted them with a the gift of prophecy. The word of knowledge. But she had no real mentors. And her minister was weak. Now let me address this to everyone that feels they have a code of God. Even when with a very great code of God. Without humbling yourself and serving under man of God. You may, you may never rise to what God has called you to be. So it is important as a young person and someone that, that is heeding to the call of God that you begin to desire the promptings of the spirit that you may be mentored and taught the working of God. So before you desire the impartation of fire tonight, you need to be very sure of what God has already released upon your life. Of what God has called you to do in your days. In 1988, when Had Bonke preached in Yuhuru Park, and about 20,000 people attended the final night. And then the president of Kenya, Arab Moy, was there in person. Vorin had Bonke preached the full gospel. Not even thinking the president was there. When, show over, when she saw over 10,000 people surrender their lives to Christ during that time, she was blown away. She was blown away. Now, you can never desire the things of the spirit until you are blown away by a normal man. Hello. 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 
Tell your neighbor. Before you meet someone that you studied with, that you grew with, when they have a God that is greater than the one you have, it is when you so know what, that you need God. What doing this time? She says that she saw the blinds up, eyes open. That they had. The people walked and more. And she said, if Bonke lays her hand, hands on me and, and pray, pray, I shall receive this blessing. And then she, she made a prayer. This was amazing. So you should be very careful when you are before God and the kind of prayer you pray. She said, Lord, Lord, you gave Bonke hundred souls. Thousand souls. Please give me a hundred souls and I will be a happy woman. Neighbor, when you go before God, tell your neighbor and ask what only God can do. Hello. Hello. Never waste your energy on what you can do. But the moment you appear before God, ask for what only God can do. So, a few years later, four years, four years later, in 1992, she heard that Reinhard Bonke was going to be in Norway. Then she flew to Norway in Oslo, Norway. Oslo in Norway. I still believe in God that at least when had monkey will lay hands on her and receive an impartation. So during the meeting, she stood out as the only colorfully dressed woman in a sea of great dressed Europeans. She was so expectant. So expectation before God is one of the breeding places for miracles and the supernatural working of God. She starts in that meeting expecting God to touch her life. She, because the meeting was not so big, so Rain had bonk, he had to lay hands on everyone. When he laid hands on her, the power of God pushed what to the back she prospered for hours. One of her shoe flew. It flew from her foot. They looked for that shoe. And it was no more until today. Let me tell you somebody tonight. When you encounter God. There will be a mark on your life. And it shall be recorded. Now, 